Welcome to the Market Me podcast with your host, Mike Mall. Each episode of Market Me deconstructs real campaigns for actual businesses to improve their marketing efforts. Mike is the founder of Social Media House and a digital marketing consultant who teaches marketing strategy to executives and their teams from small business to Fortune 500 companies. Let's get started. Yeah, so tell me about uh, tell me about the company. Tell me about what you, what's your main the main thing because I saw the I saw the retreat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much it. I, this is something I've been really struggling. So I've, um, I've always done quite a few things. So effectively, I was just like, look, it, at the core crux of it, I create businesses that help people. <laughs> okay. Be that within business, be that within the personal lives. So at the minute, we're undergoing a launch of a group called the Nourish Group. So what we're doing within this is creating quite a few umbrella brands, which would be things like personal business development retreats. And I think this is what you've seen on socials, yeah. but effectively what we're looking to do on those is A, have foundations that actually help underprivileged people. We're then actually looking to do things to actually um, create platforms which can help people within the self-development. So looking at different areas, X, Y, Z. So that's that project which we're building there. But on other things that I've done, I've done other investments and other brand builds and stuff along the lines of that. So there's quite a few things I've done away for media, but these are the things that I'm really passionate about and I want to go all in on moving forwards. Love it, love it. And so, and you've been in Bali now for a couple of weeks, you were saying? Yeah, I've been here for three weeks, but it feels like home. I think I found my place. Hmm. So, how are you? Here. You mentioned that you traveled quite a bit. I mean, uh, being that we're kind of moving into that mode, uh, where, where have you been? What have you been up to? So Greece, Cyprus, Spain, uh, I was in Thailand before I came here. <laughs> so I went and lived on a health retreat. <laughs> so I was like, last year, I took a bit of one of those, do you know those moments in business where it's like, right, I've been doing this for 12 years. I really took the finger off like, what do I, what, where really am I going? What's the next decade of my life? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a, a bit of a life sabbatical here. <laughs> Got it. I went over to, uh, to live on a health retreat basically like a fight camp yoga retreat sort of thing for uh, six months mm. did that absolutely phenomenal and then um i do, do you know when you just know it's just like look you're now done with this place where's yeah. next yeah and then i've literally just come here and it's it's perfect it's got everything i've been looking for in all the different areas where i've been and lived uh, all in one place so love it Brilliant. and uh so and so i became aware of you uh based on the podcast i stumbled on an episode someone someone in my network had shared it tell me a bit about that how Please. long have you been doing that for uh the podcast him hmm. so the podcast actually we've been going for one year um consistently two episodes uh, a week for the year uh, we took a six-week break over Christmas, which it really drove it home to me how important that was. Because obviously, when you stop doing something, you kind of realize how much of a part of your life it played. Yeah. So obviously, now we're um, we're just kicking off this year with a brand new strategy and approach of what we're going to do. So I'm really excited for that. But we've been doing it now for one year, and it's been the best move I have made in a the content that I produce, but more to the point of also expressing my own creativity. I've always, um, I've always found that doing long form, I love writing, I love creating content, but I've always known deep down that um, I'm either voice or video. <laughs> yeah. But I'm always the one that got in my own way with doing it. So it took got me it. two years to actually do the podcast and it literally took one of my close friends to buy me the full setup and go, dude, stop fucking about, this is your thing, go and do it. Um, and then within a week from having that nudge, that's what created it. And it just blew up from that Love really. So, Love it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how I started. We, uh, well, I was getting, you know, my team breathing down my neck about publishing content. Where are these blogs? And, and for me, writing is, it's not, it's not pretty. I don't write well, uh, but I, I have these concepts and I started developing them and they turned into, this is going to be the be all and end all. It's a 5,000 word, everything you could possibly ever need to know about this thing. Yeah. I, kept, I kept getting into them and I was like, well, then I have to explain this and it's got to go out here and it's got to link out here. And I, it just is like a never ending. And so nothing got produced for like four and a half months. And they're like, this needs to stop. Get a video camera and shut up. Well, don't shut up, but stop writing. I, t I, totally, I totally get that. Especially yeah. when you follow in these, um, like if you follow all these uh, business gurus, like uh, let's say Gary Vee, for example, and he's literally screaming down the phone at you every day. He's like, look, 
to build a brand, you've got to do like 3,000 pieces of content a day. <laughs> it's like, shit, <laughs> I'm trying to, trying yeah. to juggle four here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm struggling. I get awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. So, so tell me about, tell me about the new, the new path you're working on some of the new, the, the new project. So the new path for me is I've, I've always been, I've always loved helping people. That's always been like my true nature and everything I've always done. It's, it's guided me back. Um, I'm a very adventurous person, done a lot of things all over the world and challenges and things like that. And for me, I, I, it's, it always comes down to the, per, if we can help the individual person, this will then ripple into every other area of their life. So a prime example is businesses don't fail. Relationships don't fail. The people within them fail them. And for me, it always comes back down to the person. Um, like, why is this not moving forwards? Why is this conversation not happening? What are we really scared of? Why are we scared of stepping in front of the camera? I know this from myself. I know this from people who we work with. I know this from personal brands, even businesses where management aren't having conversations. But for me, the, the big purpose for me is how can we help people so that it helps A, them in every area of the life, but as a ripple effect of that, you're also going to help humanity. So for us, it's how do we create a platform and how do we like use our network and the things that we're really good at and our strengths to A, create the, the messages, the content, the events, uh, the summits, and more to the point, the, the platforms and the education and things that we can put out there that are really going to create that really so that's that's kind of what i'm is really exciting me at the minute and um i'm always a big believer in when you take a footstep you'll get an echo back so if you do the right step for example you with this podcast if you do it and suddenly you get four people saying look that podcast really helped me and changed my life then that's always the you should always take another step yeah and um, so i've been doing that i've been strutting and slowly doing it for about six months um, and obviously with the podcast getting the exposure that that has it's just been a dead set no this is what you're here to do knuckle down on this you're good at this go all in on it so that's that's the next step and i'm fully in it loving it got it and do you uh is it just you or do you have a team how is it what's the composition Yep. So the fun thing is at the minute we went through a major rebrand um, last year as we started undergoing this project and laying it down. Um, me at the time, <laughs> stepping into this, thought it would be a much smaller project than what it turned out to be. <laughs> so we do have a team. It, it all works remote. So they're all over. So I've got a very trusty um, admin team that stands shoulder to shoulder with me and keep me on the straight and narrow, <laughs> so to speak. Okay. <laughs> Got it. And so how would you break down? Uh, there's obviously some online learning pieces, some in-person stuff. How, do you have kind of a, a breakdown of what it is? Is it a bit of a sequence? Is there kind of something, depending on what you need? Um, do you know what I mean? Is that like a... Yeah. So pretty much for us, the, the biggest thing is how do we help the it's time time's always going to be biggest that the biggest killer in any service-based business isn't it so for us it's how do we create the well then it's not built yet but it yeah. is being built and this will be the next thing at the minute we're focusing on the things that we can do which are our events retreats summits um but in the background we've got things being built like membership platforms uh courses and then they'll those will scale up into things like masterminds and then events but okay. um I, I've got to be like honest here and like full transparency. I've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. Um, I don't see that's going to be the future because for for someone, and I, I think you're the same. You might be the same. I'm not quite sure. But if you're someone who's got this big drive to help people and to help a lot of people and to impact people on a mass scale, there's a real hard issue with when it comes down to one-on-one -on -one work with how many people you can actually work with before it actually starts to take away from the greater vision. Yeah. Um, and I've learned this in the past. So I, for me, it's created systems where it's not allowing that to happen, giving what we can. And then, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Bringing people into actual events where we can impact them more. Got it. And we do get a little bit addicted to that one on one because you like that. That is that individual light bulb that goes off. You're like, I just changed something for them. And like, it feels, feels great. So it's hard to get away from it. Uh, I've been having some conversations with people maybe doing some joint ventures around something in a bigger format. And, and I, I think you're on the right track. I think that is the way to do it. Um, I know yeah, it's hard to get I, out of a head. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I, um, I've, I've always, I've always come up against that barrier. It's the time. And for someone who wants to connect and all that sort of stuff, 
But unfortunately, if you, what's, what's the old famous saying? It's uh, coaches sell time, CEO sell systems. So you've got to create the systems to leverage time. Um, yeah. And I think this is a lot of the trap we do, obviously a lot of like business consulting coaching. And we notice a lot of people really get stuck in this gray zone between being the sole opener where everything's built on them and then actually becoming the entrepreneur when they've got to leverage tech and team and delegation. So I think there's a very big gray zone here where a lot of people get stuck. Yeah. And so talk, talk to me a little bit about who the people are that, that should kind of reach out to you, the kind of look for your content. Is it all like entrepreneurs? Is it coaches? Is it, uh, Tell me a little to bit be honest, we, the, the majority of the people and audiences that we serve are people who just know there's more. People who might be stuck in a career or a job or just some aspect of life where they know they're not truly doing what it is that they're meant to do. Now, in the marketing world, you're always told to, told to market to an avatar. Um, however, for us and what we do, it, it, it doesn't work like that. We have to go to mindsets and emotional states and stuff like that. So that's more of our part is where, where are these people at that, that part of the life, which is, are they feeling stuck? Are they feeling like there's more, but they just don't know where to go? Uh, is there no clarity? And for us, it's those people. And again, that's the biggest echo we're getting back from the podcast. And I genuinely believe that's why the podcast has become the success that it has is because of that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Love it. Very cool. You mentioned before uh, near the beginning about uh, partnering with different organizations. Um, yeah. How did you mean that? I just, because I had a thought and um, I was just curious about how you meant that. Yeah. Um, partnerships and collaborations are everything. Everyone can help each other. I think we live in a world where everyone views everyone as competition and they're always looking over the shoulder to try and be. And I think we're all here to help each other and I'm, I'm more than happy to collaborate with people as long as it's, you know, actually going to impact everyone, everyone's winning and all sorts of that. And I think there's a lot of growth to be had in partnerships, collaborations and affiliations um, if people just open themselves up to it. And I think as well that can, it can replicate itself both from social networks, individual networks and also business networks because Obviously, you can, you can provide a lot more value to your customers in a business sense if you can partnership with synergistic business or things that slot in perfectly. But also as well within your own, your, your own life, and I know you being an entrepreneur, you'll realize this, as you go through your own growth, it's very hard and you're the person who's having to put everyone else's fires out. Hmm. It's sometimes very hard to have the social circles next to you dis to discuss your problems. And I think by partnerships and collaborating and getting into networks with people who are maybe on the same journey as you, it's also good for your, your individual circles, your own mental health and your own well-being is to actually be able to express and have those conversations with people who are in the trenches alongside with you. So a big thing for us is always connecting, creating communities and collaborating where we can. And I think that's yeah. a really important thing to be viewed as. Look for collaboration over competition. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm in. We're in the same. We're in the he same headspace about that. Actually, it's funny. There's a book. Uh, it's called The Entrepreneurial Roller Coaster. I don't. Oh, I've heard of this. I've not read yeah. it, but I've, I've, someone's. Yeah. So I I don't remember who wrote it. Uh, I read it years ago uh, when I was kind of starting in the software world, uh, kind of venturing out, doing my own thing, and I've had people don't quite understand what it's like. They, oh, well, you get to work your own hours and you do this and you do that. They think it's all, everything's so glamorous. And I'm like, yeah, you, you wait till you've got $25,000 payroll coming out and you've got 4,000 in the bank and you tell me how great it feels, right? We've all been there. Um, I, I think that's, that's the hard thing is everyone thinks it's like, oh, you're doing really well. And like, no, nah. <laughs> it's like the business is, but I'm right. taking nothing from this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but actually, so that book was the perfect thing to give to somebody who is not currently an entrepreneur. If they're like, I don't understand why you're so stressed all the time. Um, I gave that to my parents. I probably didn't read it, I'm sure. But to get into that headspace, I'm like, do you want to know what goes on? Like, read the book. And it's very plainly written. And it does, it articulates it in such a way you're like, that's it. Yep. That's the one. Sometimes I'm in the fetal position on the couch for two days. Just <laughs> it's going to happen. 
<laughs> I, I get it. I get it. And I think that's, I think this is as well why what we were just saying then it's so important to, to have those, those networks so you can actually discuss those problems and get another set of eyes from someone who might be able to see a different way around that scenario yeah. or maybe who has been through something similar yeah. because it's as much as this is what annoys me, man, online is it's made to be so like easy and glamorous. And like, even, even for someone like myself, who's nomadic, just travels around with it. Like a lot of the time on social media, it can look like you're just sitting on a beach and just going to, to you know, extravagant beach club. And I'm like, that's 20 minutes of my day for a meeting. The rest of it, yeah. I'm sat, sat in here, you know, for eight hours. Yeah. Busting it out. So yeah, it's amazing what people see as a highlight and don't see what's behind the scenes. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your your background. I mean, I think you've got something that's kind of cool, the the podcast and the and the groups, but take take me back a little bit. Kind of where did you where did you come from? How'd you kind of come up in the space? We we've got a lot of time, haven't we? This is, it's a big, <laughs> big this is a big journey. Um I, I will make this really, really short. So in in short, basically, I started, I was a gymnast. I was a high-performing gymnast from a very young age. There's a really fun story how I got into that. However, it'll probably take up too much time. But um, in, in short, <laughs> I got into gymnastics from three. I got to a really high level, fell out of love with it. I then ended up in the fitness world um, where we were doing personal training, which obviously was helping people. This, but I got to a point where we were very successful as a one-on-one -on -one. We had like a two-year waiting list and there was just so many people on the list. I was like, why are we not able to serve these people? Mm. Um, and then for me at that time, that time, that's when it kind of rang true. It's like, no, we're, we're here to serve a greater audience. But the thing for me is I always knew it was global. I was like, no, it's a global audience, not one-on-one. -on -one. So most people in this position would have gone and built a gym. Um, however, I'm really, I'm so, so grateful that very early I realized for me, I have to build something that doesn't, I'm, I'm very freedom orientated. So I couldn't have something that locked me down geographically. So brick and mortar businesses were just, it's a no, I, I right. physically <laughs> cannot do that. Yeah. So brick and mortar, it had to leverage time. So I, I'm so fortunate of a very naive, even though everything else was all over the show at that age, of, I think it was 21. The, the one thing that I really, really was clear on was for the rest of my life, I needed to build things around freedom, X, Y, Z. So in short, we then underwent into the online world. So we built um, a very large online coaching platform um, from, and this is where I learned all of my major lessons in business, building teams, growing too quickly, the absolute work. So <laughs> from age of 21 to 25, I pretty much went through every single business lesson. And I think from what you were saying before, like when it looked Things are going great for the business, mm -hmm. but deep down, I'm either screaming at a wall, hiding under the covers, X, Y, Z. And I think this is where I really learned the lessons within self-development. Like, no, nothing was to blame for me. Um, within that, there, it was me not having conversations. It was bad leadership, bad vision, bad why, X, Y, Z. Actually, I hate using the word bad. I was young and didn't really know when I was navigating myself, stumbling my way forward, so to speak. Yeah. Not bad. That's the complete wrong word. Um, but it was from this where I just started really researching into it. So it became really quite, I just started studying a lot of things. Like why are successful people successful? Why are athletes the best performing people in the world? What leads to high performing psychology? Why do businesses work? And it was, I, I just became to this realization that the majority of things are systematic. Um, successful businesses work from systems successful people have set systems like into their daily routines into their days that allow them to perform at the best and it was from this that i started realizing like why do people do what they do and that's what led me through to this next phase um for me again i had that complete gray zone of, of fear when i built one thing which was doing well and then i had this and for me i had that whole thing of like look this served its purpose it's not the future for where we're going to go. Um, I, had, I, did, I was too scared. I was very scared at the point to have a lot of conversations with it, to let go of it and to go in, go after the new thing. Um, but then I mustered the courage after a few very honest, raw, broken down to tears conversations with my dad. I was like, 
I'm not happy. And the, the question, this is a real groundbreaking question as well for, I think from a personal thing to business, even though we had the successful business, um, I asked myself honestly, and this was the conversation that led to my dad, uh, having the conversation with my dad, am I happy? Am I connected? And am I healthy? And even though we had everything that looked great as a highlight within the business sense, my health was bad. I got it. I was up at 115 kilograms. I, I usually sit around 86. I wasn't in a good place. Mental health wasn't great. If I were brutally honest now, I was in the worst place mentally, happiness levels I've ever been in my life. Um, was it connected? No, I wasn't connected to the people around me, X, Y, Z, relationships will fall into bits. So it was at that point, it was just like, look, all the red flags are here. This is all wrong. You need to go and work on yourself. So at that point, that's when it was an easy decision to drop this, go fathom things out, get back aligned. And then um, I think it was 24, 25 when I went through all of that. And then it was a case of, look, this is what we're here to do now. This is when we started building up um, this next venture and the next Nourish Group. And this is where it really became a process of just helping people both on the personal sense, but also within the business. So it was like life and business. It has to synergize and knit because it's on this person's so shoulders why this is successful. Makes perfect and sense. In short, I think yeah. it's, a, it's a bit big, that story. Yeah. But it, <laughs> but, a very long process. There's a few other twists and turns in that. But in short, short that was it. So it was um, the battle of self led to the direction of purpose, I think. Awesome. Makes total sense. And so for, for those, I think, so there's a lot of people that, that listen that are, um, you know, they've got their own, their own business in all different kinds of capacities. The response I get from this podcast is like really strange. I attract like really weird kind of direction of people. Um, but one thing I'm curious about is, and I went through my own kind of version of what you're talking about and I don't often get the forum, but, um, tell me a little bit about the most important thing that you've learned about making that transition. Um, so there was obviously conversations that you had, there was having the honesty and having the whatever, but what was kind of the biggest, biggest takeaway for you with it? The, the biggest, I, the, there were so many. Um, look, I think the biggest thing for me is I became a martyr um, to the business. I didn't want to let people down. My, this is again, going back to the gymnastic days. My two biggest, I'm not scared of dying at all, but I am scared of letting people down. And I think that was the biggest thing for me when you've got a team and stuff like that. And even though I'm the one that's taking the hits, I was very worried about like saying, look, we can't, this, this can't continue. Um, and I think if you don't do what's right by, by you, you'll die by your own sword. Um, and I think that was the position I was in. And this is why I'm, I, even though I was very young at that period, I, I learned a lot of lessons about myself and it, I think it matured me quite a lot of more about like brutally honest, having the right conversations with people, really being aware of like your why, your wants, the direction in life that you want to take. Like this is why I, Gary Vee's stuff is, again, is very self-awareness driven. As much as I'm not fully on board with the work to lead die mentality, I think yeah. the way he speaks around self-awareness is is bang on the nail. Um, but also, the, we just had a podcast and it was summed up so well, uh, which was the treasure in which you seek lies in the cave which you fear to enter most. Hmm. And that was the biggest thing for me was the thing that I was after the most was in the places I was the most scared to go. Uh, those are the conversations that would have freed me out. The, the action to do that and to go and follow through with what I knew I should have been doing. Um, yeah. so I think on a personal sense, that's where a lot of, uh, personal lessons got highlighted and personal wisdom came from, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Are there any, uh, resources or books or podcasts or people that stick out to you? If somebody, you know, somebody's in this kind of process now trying to figure out anything that you leaned on or that maybe you discovered after and you're like, damn, I wish I had knew about, <laughs> I'd known about that. There's been a merge. There's been a real merge. Um, <laughs> this is so weird. I was a very close-minded guy back in that period. I think that's why it came to so, so much entrapment. I was very closed. I wasn't open, wouldn't have conversations. Um, in terms of tools and resources, I think there's amazing people like Jordan Peterson. There's a guy who I've recently started following, I'm hoping to get onto our show, called Aubrey Marcus. 
And I think for the past couple of years, if there's someone who you look really look into kind of see who's got the full piece of the puzzle in place, um, I think he's a brilliant guy. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've realized from looking at people who inspire you as well is don't just look for the one individual. You've got to look for people who are doing great things and, and so-called successful in every single area of life and not just, you might have the riches and the wealth, but I've, I've met a lot of millionaires and billionaires who are really unhappy. So maybe that's not the person I should be aspiring to be. Um, and I think, again, how well do we know what areas of our life are important to us? How well are we moving all of those balls forward, but also the people whose content we consume how actual successful are they within every single area of their life? And does it meet, match what you want in your life? Um, and for me, I think that's what it comes to when it comes to searching for a mentor. And um, the people whose work I I've, I've really like love are people, again, like Aubrey Marcus's, um, because I think he's really got that holistic uh, approach. I think Jordan yeah. Peterson, just for the... I'm, I think the spiritual and then the science. And I think Jordan Peterson is very good at merging um, and then realistically after that, people like Ryan Holiday, um, I look Gary Vee obviously for the business advice, X, Y, Z. Again, that's one individual area why I follow that guy. Am I inspired by the way he lives? X, Y, Z. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but the information and stuff like that he puts out, I think is absolutely, it's, it's gold. Absolute gold. But the guy doesn't inspire me with the way he lives or his goals. Um, so, and yeah, th so there's just things like that. And to be honest, I... Out of every mentor I've had um, and the amount of money I've invested into people, I would still hand on heart say to this day, the best personal stuff I've got is from books, from a 10 pound book. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So. Are, you, are you the kind of guy that invests in, in kind of the mastermind? Do you, do you put yourself in the rooms with certain people? Obviously, you've got, you, you're hosting your own, but I found a lot of people in that, that ecosystem that are in that kind of space will often invest with other people at that level i'm just curious if you're the if you're kind of there or I, you're going to stay in your own lane i've i think there's a fun thing with, with mentorships and masterminds and stuff like that the the one thing is i there's a there's a there's a habit and a correlation i see which is a lot of people keep investing into mentor and coach and mentor and coach and mentor and coach xyz and I personally will, the role, let's just break this down. So the role of a mentor and coach is you will go to them to get your lesson and then you disappear. You're not there to have a coach forever and your coaches will change and your mentors will change. One, you might learn something from, from an hour of time um, and one, it might be over a few weeks, but you'll get something, what you need from that person, the lesson in which you're seeking and then it will, it will move on. Um, but I've, I found a lot of people become really like either stuck. So there's a lot of unfulfilled mentorship I find at the minute and masterminds where people are in them, they'll get what they need, but then they're stuck in it for a year. I got what I needed for the, for the first week, but now I've, I've signed this contract for a year. Right. Now for me, um, I, I learned the lesson of like get the lesson, but also learn yourself because a lot of the time with mentorships and when you're constantly listening to someone else and need someone else to validate your ideas the creative spark it gets in the way because if you've got a, a coaching session every week and you've got these amazing ideas and create that creativity spark where you wake up at three and if you take the action it will create something magic but if you suddenly get that it's like oh no i've got to wait till i speak to steve on monday <laughs> and i think you can kind of kill your the thing that makes that thing work for you by always relying on a mentor or always relying on a third party's voice um, and there's been some times in my life where I've listened to the mentor and I knew I should have done it, even though they disagreed. Prime example of podcast. I got talked yeah. away from it. But I was, in, in here, it's like, no, you, you're, you're made for this. Yeah. So there's that as well. I think you've deep down, we know. <laughs> yeah. We really know. And I think sometimes we can come a little bit crutch heavy on that. Um, going back to the original question around masterminds, I, I, I love in investing into those things because of the community and the network and the people that you meet to get their ideas, to see what's new um, and in stuff like that. But I think when it comes down to mentorships, coaching and mastermind, you've just got to be, you've got to find the things that will work for you and not become too heavy and reliant 
on that. You've got to still keep your own lane. Yeah, I think I, I think one problem with that space, something that I've observed anyways, is you've got people that that don't have the confidence to trust their own instinct because I think some of the people that are in the space or that are out there are trying to push you to not and to force you to lean on them, which is, I, so, and I, I'm, on, I'm on the same boat with you. It's, it's once you've learned what you need, um, then level, level into the next thing or, or just start executing. I, I, I see so many people that keep going back to it for validation, 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 and never actually do anything with it at all. Yeah. Nothing starts, nothing happens. Uh, there's like totally. the, the warmth of it. <laughs> I mean, the fun thing is like the way I look at it is, you know, immediately when you need something. So like, I'm here, I'm like, oh shit, we need tech help. I need someone now who can just give us a bit of guidance and some structure. So instead of like getting these, do you know what I mean? You can just go to someone and say, look, I just need half an hour of your time. Can you just guide us through this? There's the answers. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, now I need help here. So I just go, here. You, so you can always get that stuff, but. This is what I'm trying to say. I just, I think you're correct in what you're saying. A lot of people become so reliant, they, they lose themselves sometimes in that process. Yeah. Or the thing one, that makes the thing work in that process. One thing that I've done a couple of times, just because you, it's a pay by the minute thing. Have you heard of clarity.fm? Nope, but it sounds awesome. It's, it's a pay by the minute consulting platform. And so I, yeah, so I realized that that there is actually a certified pricing coach. He's like one of 20 or one of 10 certified pricing coaches. I don't know how you get the certification. I'm not even quite sure what it is, but when I was struggling with my price, I actually called him and he broke down, okay, what do you get? What do they get? What's entailed? Like how much work goes in going through all the pieces and then say, okay, well, what do you charge? And I think it should be here. And he was about, I think it was about $650 an hour. So I was talking to him. No, no. so I was talking to him. And at like 43 minutes, I'm like, all right, I got to go. I got all the information I needed. And I ended the call and it was you know, $476 or whatever. But it was kind of an, it, interesting that you say that because it is really just on demand. You send them a bunch of information and what, you, uh, what you're curious about and anything that can lead them into understanding it a bit ahead of time. Uh, and then when it's like hit the ground running and, and kind of jump in. So it's interesting. Exactly. Exactly. You always know though, you always know, like when you feel stuck, it's like, okay, I need some help. Then is the time to go and get help and ask for it. Right. But yeah, I, I totally get that. You know, you know what you need and you know when you've got it and yeah. then you know, makes total so. sense. Well, it's cool, man. I'm, I'm excited about the journey. I'm excited about the, the launch when, when everything gets up and running, uh, you sound like a, Really today. Awesome. <laughs> oh, good. Congratulations. So today with the personal stuff. So we've got the personal new strategies and stuff like that going out. And then piece by piece, we're rolling it out. My biggest thing in entrepreneurship, uh, the biggest skill I learned last year was patience. <laughs> I mm, think that's a tough so one for me. It was, ah, oh, totally. Hmm. And so how can people find, uh, how can people find you on the internet? Yeah. I'll, so I'll link it up um, as well, but yeah, um, pretty much. Most places, if you just type in Simon Hall or on Instagram, Facebook, Google Podcasts, XYZ, um, it will come up. And look, if if anyone's listening, um, I'd love to know if you've taken anything away, away from it. If you could just simply take a screenshot, tag us both in the stories and let you know what you've taken away from it. Or if there's anything we can help on, just slip into the DMs. There we go. Smart. There you go. I love it. All right, man. Well, I uh, really appreciate your time and uh, good luck with the launch. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. All right.